And I've said it before, but Kathy, you're amazing. Thank you. That was beautiful. It is good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Those of you that are here and remembered that church starts at 9, congratulations. For those that are coming at about quarter to 10, uh, we'll say hi to them when they get here. For those of you that are joining us online, we are so thankful that you are with us as well. This morning, as we continue coming into the presence of the Lord, just a couple of reminders. Um, there are new Operation Christmas Child posters up on the doors in the front and in the back for the month of June. This one I can get, stuffed animals and toys. There we go. I can, I, I can understand that one, so bring those for our packing party in November. And I want to just remind you this morning to take some time to read your bulletin this morning, and then the messenger will be coming. Um, some of you have already gotten the email version. Uh, Tuesday they will get in the mail and be uh, coming to your homes. Make sure that you spend some time in reading them because there is information you need. And uh, so make sure that you do that, um, please. There's a card in the lobby, if you did not see that, uh, for someone that just needs an extra measure of our encouragement from their brothers and sisters in Christ. So make sure that you stop by and do that. Um, Women's Fellowship, the event that's happening um, in a couple of weeks, uh, make sure that you stop by and sign for, up for that as well. Um, next weekend... Uh, is a busy weekend here at St. Luke's Church. Um, Saturday, I see Richard was, where did you go, Richard? There he is. He's hiding over there. There you are. Uh, Saturday, we will celebrate the life of Shirley. Um, and uh, you can see the um, details on that on the back side of the bulletin. Um, Friday morning, um, Johnny Wymiller passed, if you hadn't heard. And um, we did not get information uh, in time to get it in the bulletin. So if you haven't heard, that, su that service will be next Sunday. The visitation will start at 1230, and the service will start at 2 p.m. here at the church. Keep those families in your prayers. Um, and as they uh, mourn and yet celebrate at the same time, Will you join me in the call to worship? I would invite you to read the bold print. God's love is poured out on his world from the foundations of time. God's love is woven into all things. When we cry, Abba, Father, God hears and lovingly responds to us. Thanks be to God who forgives and lifts us up. Open our hearts and our lives that we may truly... Oh, I, I read your part, didn't I? Sorry about that. Now we are called to be born brand new. Open our hearts and our lives that we may truly be filled with God's love. Amen. You did much better on that line than I did. How's that? This morning we open up with a singing uh, hymn number uh, 558. And uh, this is a hymn that um, I grew up with. Uh, Kathy tells me we don't do it as often as maybe we should, right? But I also learned that she walked down the aisle to this hymn. So I thought that was pretty cool. Will you join Kathy and I? in singing hymn number 558. Excelling joy of heaven to 
us with thy salvation and her every trembling heart. Breathe, O oh, pray, thy loving spirit into every troubled breast. Let us all in Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, you are so awesome to us. The mountains tremble, the seas roar at the sound of your name. Yet, you have chosen to come to us in love and tenderness. You have called us to be people that you can use to bring peace to this world. Open our hearts and our spirits this morning, Lord, to your word. And having heard from you, help us to live it out in our lives. Lord, we join our voices as a way to join our hearts together and lift before you our prayer of confession. We pray as one voice. Lord, we come to you, hiding in the shadows of our own fears, we want you to give us peace and hope in our hearts. We want to know everything will be all right. We want to live in a spirit of hope. But when we come, it is for our own sake and not to learn what you would have us do, be and do in this world. Forgive our selfishness, Lord. Calm our fears and heal our spirits. Let us be witnesses to your peace in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear friends, God's love is so great that he sent Jesus that we would truly live lives of peace and hope. Listen. Listen with your heart. God's love is poured out on all of us who call on the name of Jesus. And in that, 
we rejoice. Before you are seated, there are those around you that are, you know, God's poured his love out on them too, but they need a little reminder from you. Will you go and greet them this morning? As you are finding your way back to your seats, we don't have a bucket this morning, um, but we have something else that um, I would like to have you all share in. Um, yes, come on forward. Um, this young man coming down the aisle, uh, for those of you who don't know, his name is Christian, that's what we'll call him. Um, and uh, Christian has done uh, an amazing thing for St. Luke's. And I want to honor that first. Um, those of you that have watched the live streams for how many years now that we've been doing it, um, um, he has the one that's been up there doing that. Um, and uh, so, thank you. A couple of big events happened in the last year. And um, uh, uh, one, um, we didn't make a big deal of before, but I'm going to make a big deal of it now. Uh, Christian made a decision on his own to take our last name. Um, that's not the name that he was born with, but uh, his name is legally Christian McCann. And, uh, and I, I got to tell you, as a grandpa, that's a proud moment. Um, and so I just wanted to share that with you. Why is he standing here right now? Um, Wednesday of this week, uh, we drive him up to the Twin Cities, and uh, he flies out to Columbia, South Carolina, uh, to start nine and a half weeks of basic training. And uh, I thought that it was appropriate on Memorial Day weekend, as we have a young man who's a part of our church family, going off to make a decision that not everybody makes. And uh, it sent, I got a little shiver up here. Um, and we want to send him off with our love and our prayers. And I want to invite anyone that would like to join us to come up here and stand with Christian and I. And uh, we are going to send him off with our, the prayers of his church family. Come. Come over here. By the way, he dressed up for us today. I thought I would point that out. Uh, this is the, one of the last days he has a choice in what to wear. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, just come and gather around him. There you go. You guys are far more important. There you go. Christian gathered around you right now are those that love and care for you. And I bet you didn't even know. And uh, those that are not here, they love and care for you as well. Um, but we just want to send you off with our love and our prayers. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for loving us. And we thank you for loving Christian. We thank you for laying on his heart 
to love you in return. And we thank you for the dream that you gave him ever since he was a young boy to serve his country in the military service. This week he begins that journey officially. We ask that you would continue to draw him close to you. And we do ask that you would protect him, that you would give him friendships that will last a lifetime, and that you will surround him with those that will take him where he never thought he could go. As his church family, help we commit to continuing to pray for him and hold him near you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. so focused on Christian that I forgot that there's moms. So Jesus be with moms too. They're sending their sons off. Amy, would you come and share from the word of God with us this morning? Luke 21, 5 through 19. As some were talking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and the gifts dedicated to God, he said, these things you see, the day will come when not one stone will be left on another that will not be thrown down. The teacher, they asked him, so when will these things happen and what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? Then he said, Watch out that you are not deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he. And the time is near, don't follow them. When you hear of wars and rebellions, don't be alarmed. Indeed, it is necessary that these things take place first. But the end won't come right away. Then he told them, nation will be raised, or raised up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be violent earthquakes and famines and plagues in various places, and there will be terrifying sights and great signs from heaven. But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you. They will hand you over in the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to bear witness. Therefore, make up your minds not to prepare your defense ahead of time, for I will give you such words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will even be betrayed by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends. They will kill some of you. You will be hated by everyone because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be lost. By your endurance, gain your lives. Thank you. We continue our praise and our worship this morning with the giving of our tithes and our offerings. Ushers, would you come? Unite our hearts again by uniting our voices in prayer. We pray as one voice. Heavenly Father, 
We give thanks for all you have done and continue to do for us. You welcome us as part of your family and as members of your household. Help us always to show our gratitude, not only through these gifts, but also through our acceptance of others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please be seated. the wilderness 
They stood as heroes in our midst, with courage in their hearts and fists. And with each step, they faced the call to serve their land, to give their all. They left behind their homes and kin for fields of battle, fierce and grim. With steadfast hearts and selfless grace to fight for freedom in every place. They marched across the dusty sands to foreign shores and distant lands. And there they fought with all their might in blazing sun and darkest night. Their names now etched in history's page, a lasting tribute for every age to those who served and fell in line to keep our freedoms ever shine. For those who paid the ultimate cost, their lives laid down, their battles lost, their sacrifice a priceless gain for the freedom we proudly claim. We honor them with every breath and cherish them beyond their death. Their bravery a beacon bright, guiding us through the darkest night. So let us pledge with all our might to keep their legacy shining bright and hold them close within our heart, their memories never to depart. It's 3 a.m. on a cold winter day. Patchy snow covers the landscape. As loudspeakers be overhead begin telling everybody to get to their places, surrounded by sandbags, concrete barriers, and roughly 10,000 soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines. Bagram Air Base has flipped a switch and turned from sleep to a sea of green and tan waiting for directions. Some awake from a moment of sleep. Others are getting off their duties and headed off to something else, all focused on the events about to unfold. Down the three-mile main road to this Afghan base, Standing shoulder to shoulder, soldiers wait to pay respect to a fallen comrade. Soon, the lights of emergency vehicles can be slowly seen uh, as they make their way up the road. Escort, escorts are leading a, a flatbed trailer on its way to a cargo plane. On the trailer, are three caskets draped in U.S. flags. As the trailer approaches the soldiers lining the street, each pays their respects by saluting sharply for those who paid the ultimate price. Once the trailer reaches the plane, the formation is dismissed, and thousands of soldiers in the middle of a war zone paying homage and respect the best way they know how. Similar ceremonies are played out in other parts of the world, all to show the love and respect for the sacrifices and dedication military personnel show every day. Memorial Day is about remembering those fallen heroes and honoring their sacrifices on our behalf. Every conflict we've been involved in has had its share of casualties, often due to the unusual bravery displayed during combat. Occasionally, during those conflicts, something happens. A, a soldier does something out of the ordinary, and it's so out of the ordinary that Congress acknowledges the person's efforts by awarding them the Medal of Honor. 
This award, this award is repre, uh, presented to someone who distinguishes themselves at the risk of their life above and beyond the call of duty. Often these individuals sacrifice themselves for the greater good of others. One such individual was Douglas Albert Monroe. The Medal of Honor was awarded to Petty Officer Monroe because of his actions on 27 September 1942. Monroe engaged in the evacuation of Marines that were trapped by enemy, enemy forces on um, Point Cruz Guadalcanal. Monroe, under constant uh, strafing by enemy machine guns at, and at great risk to his life, led five of his uh, small boats towards the beach, and they were to pick up the Marines there. And, and he, uh, as they got closer, he motioned for four of them to continue going, and then he, in his boat, in his crew, continued on in, in, in the front of them to draw the fire away from the other boats. When the evacuation was nearly complete, Monroe was killed, but his crew carried on until the last boat was filled and got off the beach. And by his outstanding leadership, his expert planning, and devotion to duty, he and his courageous crew saved the lives of many who otherwise would have perished. He gave his life for his country. There are many, many more stories like this. Many men and women have put their lives in extreme danger for their comrades in arms, and in some cases gave their lives in order that others might live. On the table before us as a representation of those individuals is the dress hat that isn't all that dressy anymore, a picture, and a, heart, a purple heart awarded posthumously to my uncle, Garnet Dean, who died in Luzon, Philippines, when Gen General Douglas MacArthur and the Army of the United States of America returned. In every, in every war, in every battle, these things occur. And sometimes, from individuals you would least expect. In a small Middle Eastern country, nearly 2,000 years ago, that's exactly what happened. His name was Jesus, son of Joseph the carpenter, raised in Nazareth, the scriptures don't tell us much about his childhood. Yeah, you all can do the Christmas story and the story of the Magi. And we have the story of the time that he stayed behind in the temple and his parents had to go find him. But beyond that, we don't know a lot of his, we don't know anything else about his childhood. But really, who would have expected heroic actions from this person. The prophet Isaiah tells us there's nothing about him, there was nothing about him physically which would have hinted at the possibility of any heroics. Certainly nothing like we picture heroes. Like so many of our heroes in our present day, he too gave of himself. Jesus put himself in harm's way. He endured pain and suffering for the benefit of others. Isaiah 53 tells us, surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet 
We considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. And Jesus did this willingly. He volunteered for duty, we might say. Isaiah continued, he was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. Matthew records for us twice in his gospel of how Jesus responded to the pain and suffering he knew was about to endure with the words, not my will, Father, but yours be done. And like Petty Officer Monroe, Jesus willingly endured the pain and suffering on behalf of his people to the point of death. In fact, the Apostle Paul wrote, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Paul also wrote, very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And it's at this point that our comparisons fall short. Because you see, the men and women of the military put their lives in danger for the sake of their fellow, so fellow soldiers and, and for us against other human beings. But the battle Jesus Christ waged was against something far more powerful, far more devastating. Jesus' victory was not simply the taking of some hill or, or a body of water or, or, or one country over another, but one which secured our very souls. The victory over the power of the devil and sin in our lives and ultimately the victory over death. In this victory... The sacrifice made by Jesus Christ inspired those who witnessed it or heard about it. Peter, Peter, one of Jesus' 12 guys, encouraged his readers with the lessons that he learned. And he said, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with, with gentleness and respect. Later, Peter continued and he said, Be alert and be sober-minded. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Stand firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kinds of sufferings. And I got to thinking, the clearest example of how Jesus' life, death, and resurrection inspired his people is the fact that we are here today on a holiday weekend gathered to sing hymns, hear for the word of God, offer our prayers, and encourage one another in our faith. You know, despite the wide assortment of issues creating all kinds of problems, the fact remains, the United States of America still has the best equipped, the best trained military in the world. The weaponry we have combined with the technology and the knowledge of how to use it makes us seem invincible, or at least that's what we think. But we need to be honest. 
We need to admit, in a world where people do not hesitate to give their lives for their cause, we'll never be totally safe. In today's reading that Amy shared with us, Jesus explained that nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilences in various places, and fearful events and great signs from heaven. These events are happening today, and they will continue to happen in the future. Just this week, in Haiti, a young couple there not for political reasons they were there to spread the love of Jesus were murdered by the gangs that rule Haiti but in the midst of all of this the psalm writer gives us some hope and says I sought the Lord and he answered me he delivered me from all my fears the Apostle Paul, he said to Timothy, the Lord will rescue me from, evil, from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. Memorial Day weekend, when we honor those who gave everything for us, we need to admit as Christians that we are in a battle as well. But our battle is a different kind of war. The Apostle Paul reminds us, for though we live in this world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, we have divine, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. And in his letter to the Ephesians, Paul described the armor God provides us, the, the belt of truth, the, a breastplate of righteousness, feet fitted with the gospel of peace, peace, a shield of faith, a helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. This armor, combined with a life of prayer, everyday prayer, will protect us from all that tempts us in this world. This armor will preserve us for a life of eternal joy in heaven. During the Korean War, a man was badly hurt on the battlefield of Heartbreak Ridge. His buddies were in a foxhole about 50 yards away when he was hit by sniper fire in an ambush. The men discussed amongst themselves what to do, but, but since the sniper fire was so intense, to crawl out and bring their buddy back would have meant certain, almost certain death. And for a while, no one moved. And the men in the foxhole could hear their wounded friend yelling for help. And, and then one of the guys in the foxhole began to look intently at his watch. He couldn't take his eyes off it. And all the others in the foxhole began to ask him questions, but he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't listen, he wouldn't answer. And suddenly, he jumped out of the foxhole, crawled over to his wounded buddy, grabbed him by the collar, slowly made his way back to the foxhole, all the while sniper bullets whizzing all over the place, and they made it back to the foxhole without additional injury. And after the sniper fire stopped, the man who saved his buddy was asked why he waited so long. And he responded, my mom said every day at the exact same time she would be praying for me. And according to my watch, I left the foxhole exactly when she started praying. That's the battle. That's the battle we fight. And those are the weapons we fight with. 
And we may not always receive answers to prayer in such a dramatic fashion, but, but we have God's promise that the ultimate victory in this world, the one guaranteeing us eternity with him, is ours through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And as we leave this place today, remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice for the freedoms we enjoy today. Every mouthful of food we eat tomorrow will be the most costly food we've ever put in our mouths. Because every mouthful we eat will have been paid for with the lives of those who died so that we could have our freedoms. As we leave this place today, give thanks. Give thanks to God for Jesus Christ and his willingness to serve, his commitment to our spiritual freedom, our eternal salvation, paid for by his sacrifice on behalf of us for our spiritual freedom. And be confident. Be confident that in your daily faith battles, you know you're equipped by God to be a faithful warrior that makes a difference in the lives of people around you, and you can make a difference in the people of lives, uh, people's lives that you don't even know. The need for a uh, a military force in this world will probably never disappear. We will need protection to guarantee the rights and privileges that we have today. And it's through our military men and women who serve that we have unprecedented freedoms on earth. We also need to remember that it is only through Jesus Christ that we have ultimate freedom from sin and death. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we come before you humbled. Humbled that you would Send your son to die. On our behalf, we are also humbled, Lord, by those sons and daughters. who died on our behalf for our earthly freedom. And we pause for a moment and silently remember. Heavenly Father, we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, that you would hear our prayers this morning. We ask that you would continue to be with those who have lost loved ones, 
draw them close to you. Give them your peace and your understanding. We ask that you would give us each the courage to fight, to be your warrior in this world. Lord, we join our voices again as a way to join our hearts and lift before your throne room of grace. Lay at your feet the prayer you gave us, our Father, who art Kathy leads us. We sing a hymn that comes from the war between the states, this United States of America. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Kathy, will you lead us?
the beauty of the lilies. Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me as he died to make men holy, left love to make men free. Our God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Our Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain.